Well, glory, glory. We're going to jump right into the word here. Before we get started, has anybody got a testimony of what God's been doing? Yeah, God's good. He healed me this morning. I had, I don't know, three or four knots on my back last uh, side last night. And I just touched it and said, in the name of Jesus, is healed. Woke up this morning, it was healed. Amen. She said she had three or four knots in her back last night. She prayed over it and said, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. And she woke up this morning and it was all gone. She was healed. Amen. She gave that same testimony at church today, but it's worth repeating. Amen. And then I went to the uh, Winter Bible Seminar and it was wonderful. I have learned so much. I I have learned what to think on, and I think on Jesus now. I don't let my mind wander on everything in the world. I keep my mind on Jesus by listening to music, singing to Jesus in tongues, or reading my Bible. Mm -hmm. And then I got home from church this morning, and um, last night I felt like we needed to pray for one of our neighbors, and... I asked Mike to pray with me, so we prayed. And then after church, I went to my room, went to the bathroom, and God says, we'll talk to Holly. So we went over there to see how she was doing, and I prayed with her. She said her mother-in-law died this morning, and I told her that God was going to give her comfort if she would just believe in him that he could give her and her husband a brand new life. And they both just looked at me and grinned. So I know in my spirit that that's going to happen. There's no doubt in me that that's not going to happen. Because I know it's going to happen. And when it does, I'm going to be shouting with them. Amen. Amen. That's some good hope there. We can turn it into faith and just say, you know what? It happened the second we prayed. Amen. We can rejoice in the answer. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Nope, that's it. Okay. Now. Well, let's turn in the Bible. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is what causes us to be stable and strong and advance in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn in the Bible to 2 Timothy 1. Seven. We're going to talk about what has God not given to us and what God has given to us. There's a lot of people that think God wants to give us something, but they never do emphasize what he's already given, so they don't walk into victory. So let's see what he's already, let's see what he has not given us. Then let's see what uh, he has given us. That's 2 Timothy chapter 1 and in verse Seven. It says God, Second Timothy one. Second Timothy one and verse seven. For God hath not given, okay, we're going to find out what he has not given, the spirit of fear. So anything that has to do with fear, worry, anxiety, fretting, um, aggravation, being aggravated, uh, being afraid of the future, or even afraid of your past, anything that has to do with those elements, that's not God. God's not in condemnation. God's not in guilt trips. God's not in fear. He has not given that to you. So if you're operating in fear, you're actually operating in something that God has not given you. You're operating in something that the devil specializes in. So you can tell who's talking to you as well. Uh, fear of this, fear of that, dread this, dread that, hate this, hate this worry about this, all that kind of stuff. That's not from God. So what do you do? You emphasize what God 
has given you. So he hadn't given us fear. Then it says, but. What's, what's that? That's going to change everything we just fear. Everything we just, we're going to change it into faith now. But of power, he gave his power. Over what? Over the works of the devil. He gave his power over the works of the devil. He gave his power over fear symptoms. Amen. And he gave us love. So if he's given us power and he's given us love and no fear, and then when in God's fear, there is no fear. In God's love, there's no fear. So if you're operating and God loves you, then there's no fear. There's no torment, see? Isn't that good? And a sound mind. That's a cure right there for Alzheimer's. That's a cure right there for forgetfulness. That's a cure right there for uh, people just forgetting stuff all the time. It says, no, I've got power, love, and a sound mind. And also in uh, John 14, 26, but the comforter has come to give me what? To give me and bring all, bring all things back to my remembrance. Comfort and bring all things back to my remembrance. Amen. So schizophrenia would be a sign that you're operating in fear. It's a sign that you're operating in fear. God's not double-minded because James says, chapter 1, verse 8, God, an unstable person is somebody that has a double mind. That means they operate schizophrenia. They think God's changing his mind all the time. Yeah, God told me to to, to go to church, uh, to hear, but I think I'm going to go over there now. Uh, well, I, God told me to read the Bible, but I think I'm just going to read this now. Yeah, God told me to pray every day, but I think I'm going to do something else. Yeah, God told me to pray in tongues for an hour, but I, I'm getting tired of doing it, so I'm going to do this. Well, how can you get tired of doing something the guy, <laughs> that the creator of the heavens and the earth told you to do? Amen. So what do you do? You have to focus in on, just read it one more time, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. And if you have fear, there's torment. The devil will torment you. You should have done this. You should have done that. You should have reached out more. You should have told them this. You should. They're dead. They're gone. There's, there's nothing you can do. So what's he do? He tries to torment you now. And when he torments you, what does he do? He makes it where you don't have a sound mind. Then he makes you where you're hard to get along with. Because you're not operating in love. You're operating in fear. Amen. And of a sound mind. I was uh, fishing through the internet the other day. And it just popped up on my phone. And it was uh, uh, supposed to be a faith teacher. And I thought it really was a faith teacher. And so I was listening to him. And I mean, he had on the white suit and his Hair was combed back and had a pretty large congregation and real nice chairs and a real nice backdrop and cameramen and everything following him as he walked. And he read the exact same scriptures we reread about faith. And then he said, now I'm going to tell you right now, when you release that faith, I want you to believe that no matter what, God's going to do it. I said, no. I'm telling you right now, he said, hey, this is last about two weeks ago. He said, I'm telling you right now, can I get an amen that God's going to do it? And I said, no. Because faith would never say God's going to do it. That's hope. Faith would say, I have it the second I prayed. Amen. That's what amen means is so be it. That means it's done. It's done. You don't have to wait for it to happen. You don't have to wait till you see it to happen. You would never see it, actually, unless you speak faith now. So don't be double-minded. Don't be fearful. Those are enemies of the enemy. And don't just be hope-minded. Be faith-minded. Faith would always say, I have it. It's done. You don't have to wait for it to happen. You don't have to pray that it happened. You don't have to do anything. So turn your, if you want your dreams to come true, if you want your hopes and dreams to come true, then you'll have to add the element of faith. And faith is always, the prayer of faith is always finished with a real grateful amen. That means so be it. Not so be it's going to happen. So be it. It's done. 
and you get the people to agree, okay, we prayed this now, what's going on? I'm going to wait for it to happen, and it's not going to happen. There's no promise in the Bible that you wait. There's no such thing as waiting in faith. There's no such thing. Faith doesn't wait. Faith is a taker. It takes. So don't operate in fear. And don't operate in a double-minded. That means you say amen, then not even a second goes by, and you say, well, believe, be believing is it going to happen because it is not going to happen. I might as well tell you the truth <laughs> so you can make that correction so you can see stuff start happening in your life. See, it's three things. You ask or pray, you believe, and then you believe it's going to happen. No. What do you do? You believe you receive. When? Right then. Right then. When you say amen, that means it's done. Then you get whoever you're praying with to agree that it's done. Amen. I remember one time a lady, she had something wrong with her arm. It wasn't at our church. It was another church, but she was giving me the testimony, actually, at a laundromat. And she said, yeah, it hurt my arm real bad, and I couldn't hardly move or anything. It's going to have surgery on it. And said, I asked the pastor to agree with me in prayer. And the pastor agreed with me in prayer. And uh, she said, a week went by before I went back to church. I was in so much pain. And I came back to church, and the pastor said, uh, we prayed with you last week, but I had to make a correction. When we say amen, you say it's done. You're not waiting on it to happen, brother and sister. Happened over 2,000 years ago. Every prayer that you've ever prayed in your whole entire life is done. But you're the one that has to say it's done. That means faith goes together with whatever prayer it is. That's really how you pray the prayer of faith. So it is done. Not going to happen. Don't tell me when it happens. No, no. It's done. When? Right then. It's done right then. When you say amen, you're saying it's done. But Pastor Mike, I can't see it. I can't wear it. I can't eat it. I can't use any of my five senses. Right. Faith never goes by what you see. Faith goes about what you say. Do you really want it to be done in the future or do you want it to be done now? <laughs> Amen. So check your heart, check your brain, check everything and say, you know what? It's done. Amen. It's done. And then every time the devil tries to put fear on it and you just say, he tells you, oh, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. You know what you can do? The Bible says to agree with your adversary. I agree, Mr. Devil, it's not going to happen. It happened over 2,000 years ago. I'm rejoicing. It's already happened. Hallelujah. And he, uh, he'll back down then. He can't handle, he can't handle faith. Hey, let's pray tonight together. Father, we thank you. They were receiving Jesus right now. As people on here wants to receive Jesus right now in Jesus' name. Just say, Lord Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. I thank you. I'll receive you now. I believe that God has raised Jesus from the dead, and he's now Lord and coming again. Praise God. I thank you, Lord. Now that you're born of the Spirit, now you can be filled with the Spirit. And you're filled with the Spirit by simply just saying, thank you, Holy Spirit, according to Acts 19. That's what you say. According to Acts 19, Paul laid his hands on them, believers, and the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began to speak in tongues. No, the Holy Spirit did not slap them upside the head four or five times and grab their tongue and make it flap around. No, they operated with him, and he gave them an unction, and then they yielded to him. He's not going to make you do nothing. You have to yield and choose to speak in tongues. Amen. The Holy Spirit came on them, and then they began to speak in tongues. Amen. So you've already been born of the Spirit of God when you received Jesus just a few seconds ago. So now you just thank you. You just say, thank you, Lord. I received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues now. In Jesus' name, and then just take off. In Jesus' name. Now, I want you to stop. I know you don't want to stop, but I want you to stop. I'm going to show you something. Corinthians, it says, I will pray with my understanding, whatever known language you have. And then it says, and then I will pray and sing in the Spirit. See, it's a choice. You can turn it off and on. You don't have to wait for the excitement. I know some of you have got some excitement, which is good and fine. But you don't have to wait for the excitement to pray in tongues anymore. 
you can just start praying in tongues. Sho rombo singlingo sangrangishko rombo sangrakadila. Amen. I'll pray for your healing today. I'm going to pray for some people's finances too. You need some miracles in finances. Amen. We're going to pray for your finances here in just a second. Father, we thank you. This is for your healing. Isaiah 53, 5, by stripes you're healed. That's what you meditate on. It's not a one-time thing. It's just like medicine. You take it every second of every day. Amen. And 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by stripes you were healed. So if you were healed, you are healed. As you say that too. Amen. What you say, your words are power. You win by your words or you lose by your words. So if you want to win by your words, start saying that you're healed in Jesus' name. Well, I don't want to lie. You're not lying. You're telling the absolute truth. The word of God says you're healed by the stripes of Jesus. You're simply saying what the Bible. Well, I'm waiting for it to happen. I know someday it's going to happen. Well, I got news for you. It's not. It happened over 2,000 years ago. You're just agreeing that you have what already happened is available to you over 2,000 years ago. Amen. So get the, get the, get, get the, it's a going to happen out because that's not faith. You mean, actually, you need to repent from that. No, it's not a going to happen. Oh, I know I'm awaiting on the manifestation. Why? The Bible says now, 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 now. If you're not talking just like you have it, then you hadn't prayed the prayer of faith. If you're not talking just like it's done, then you hadn't prayed the prayer of faith. And the Bible says you're not pleasing to God. Actually, you actually sinned. Because the Bible says if it's not a faith, it's a sin. So you don't want to be like that. And then in uh, Hebrews eleven six, impossible to please God without faith. Well, what kind of, how do you know if you're talking faith? Hebrews eleven one says, now faith, now faith, now faith, now faith, now faith, now faith. You have to talk just like you have it now. That's faith. It's just like getting born again when you got born again. Uh, people that's gotten born again tonight and people that got born again uh, maybe years ago. Well, you didn't confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead. Now, I believe it's going to happen. I believe. No, you ain't going to say that. It happened right then. You know, it says, well, uh, I, I confess Jesus as Lord. And then the deacon of the church came over and knocked on the door. And you answer the door and you go, whoo, whoo. It just happened four days later. No, you wouldn't do that. We'd even laugh if somebody did that. Same faith you used to get saved. Same faith you used to get born again. Same faith you get filled with the Spirit speaking tongues. Same faith you get healed. It's the same faith or just one faith. There's no such thing as a gotta to prayer. If you pray hard enough. No, that's all religious. Maybe you still got some religion in you. Well, what do you do? It's a simple correction. You say, I'm sorry, Lord. And then you start speaking present tense faith. Amen. Just like in uh, the book of Romans 4, 17. It says, God called those things that were not in the natural world, which you could see. He called them that were not just like they are the way he wants them to be. So what are you saying? Amen. You have to talk like God talk unless you is to get God results. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to pray for your finances. Father, we thank you that every bill is paid and every need's met in these people's lives and they have an abundance left over in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 3.20. Amen. So be blessed now and you're highly favored already. You might as well enjoy it. Have a good one. Remember down below, if you want to Drop us a line. Give us a testimony. Amen. You'll be glad you did. Tell us your story. Have a great one. Have a good one. God bless.